Hi everyone, I'm Karen Combs and welcome to my floss tube number four. Welcome to the fourth floss too, and we're just a few days before Christmas. I had thought that I would be recording something after Christmas, but I've got a lot to show you, so I thought I'd go ahead and make this video. I hope that you all are doing well and are going to be having a wonderful holiday season. We're supposed to get some weather tomorrow in Tennessee. And we'll see. It might be a white Christmas uh, with snow. It could be an icy Christmas with ice. It could just be rain and wind. We just don't know. But we do know it's going to be cold. So good time to be in stitching. So I wanted to show you a couple of things today. I'm going to show you some works in progress and talk about some of the plans I have for stitching in 2023 next year. I'm also show you some things that I've purchased and a few little things I've found helpful when I am planning stitching. So as far as works in progress or whips, I've got a couple that I've been working on pretty consistently. I've been showing it to you along the way. And the first one I want to show you is Harriet Salt. I've been working on that pretty consistently. Um, it's on 56 count, so it's taking me a little time, but I'm still in, very much enjoying it. And here it is. This is on parchment, 56 count. But you can see I've got, and I took it out of the uh, hoop or the frame, so that's why it's folded just a little bit. But you can see I've got um, the first row of letters done, second row of the alphabet done, working on the third. And what I've done is on the first row of the alphabet, I've used a slightly darker red for my initials. And then on the second one, I've left it plain. <laughs> the reason why is because I got started and then forgot that I was going to change colors. So I thought, okay, I'll just do the full second one <laughs> in the plain color or the original color. And then on the third alphabet that I'm starting, I'm going to be putting my husband's initials. And then I'll probably continue with, pull this here, probably continue with as we go do every other one with darker thread. So I can personalize it with our initials. I'm using Swasophene. Uh, this is $24.99 for the main color. So that's the lighter red that you see here. And then using the 103 and color 335 for the darker. So I like how those just kind of stand out, just a little bit of personalization. Uh, I'm finding that the first row of the alphabet took me quite a while. It's a little bigger. It's a little bit more ornate. Once I got to this line and this line going much faster. So if you're working on Harriet Salt, you're thinking, oh, these alphabets are taking a while. I'm finding they're getting faster as we go along. So you can see we've got quite a few alphabets and then we go into some of the fun motifs. Um, Still debating if I'll do all the alphabets. I'm not sure. I'll kind of see as we go along. But this one's going to be a pretty big one. I'm doing it on 56. So it's going to be 14.75. Um, so pretty good size. But I am enjoying it. So that's one that I've been working on almost daily, at least for a little bit, trying to get at least one of the letters done each day. If I have a few minutes, um, sometimes I get three or four or five done as I sit down to stitch for a little while. So that is Harriet Salt coming along. 
I know some of you may have done this or seen it. It is an older sample sampler, but new to me uh, as I'm getting back into ditching after well, quite a few years away. Now hold this up so you can see. Now the quilts behind me are some of the ones that I've designed. I'm known for a lot of different types of quilts, but probably mostly known for my quilts of illusion. So this one is uh, ice crystals and this one is colorful cubes. Both of those patterns are on my Etsy page. Those are done with 60 degree diamonds. I know some of the other ones I've shown were done with half square triangles. This one is done with 60 degree diamonds, gives you that wonderful illusion that you see there. So that's what's in the background. So let's get back to stitching. Let me show you the next whip that I have. That's right here. And that is Quaker Dwelling. I know you've seen this. I'll put it under the close-up camera in just a minute so you can see it. So by Kathy Barrett. It's done on a white linen, but I have done it on a darker linen. I've done it on Weeks Havana 40 count, and it's getting close. Here it is. It is getting close to being done. I was looking at it this morning when I was pulling things out, and I thought, you know, I think I might be able to get this done by the end of the year. I started it in September for Sampler September and kind of a little challenge that Sherry from the cross uh, Colorado Cross Stitcher has running. So I have till the end of the year to get it done to be able to post in the group. So getting close, I've got most of the motifs done. I'm missing one right here. And I've got some bricks to fill in and fill in over here. I've got a window still to do. And I'm just working working on this the last evening or so. So that's right here. And I've got these little stars to do. I've got the um, steps done. So I still have to fill in the windows and fill in the door. And I have a few little bobbles here and there that I have to fill in. I miss that. <laughs> I got to finish that. I missed a brick up here. A few things. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it done. This is a lot of stitching and in the brickwork. That, you know, I don't know. I'm going to do as much as I can. And I may save some of this fill in or between the bricks and the door and the windows. I might save that. I'm going on a retreat. Uh, actually, StitchCon. So if you're going to StitchCon, I'll be there. I think it is the first weekend, weekend A. I believe that's when I'm going. So I may just take this and save some of the uh, fill-in for them. But really pleased with how it looks. And these motifs are so fun to do. And they just give such a richness to the design. So this one I'm enjoying. I work on this one most evenings. Usually do Harriet Salt in the day when I have a little more natural light, uh, when I have some free time. But this one I usually work on in the evening. So those are the whips that I've been working on. I'll just lay this down and show you what's next. Just... When you see me reach over, I'm switching the camera so you can see uh, different angles. So plans for 2023. So I've been thinking about that. And I have a few works in progress. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to start a lot more, but I think I am going to start a few because I've been collecting patterns, as we all do, or charts. And I thought, hmm, let me have a plan. Of course, that plan is subject to change. <laughs> but I thought, I have a plan to start thinking about it. And I was watching some of the older Brenda and the Serial Stitcher. I can't remember which one it was, maybe from a year ago. And 
they mentioned their friend, oh, did not write down her name, Christy, perhaps, who was turning 40 last year, or maybe it was this year, earlier this year, and she was going to do 40 starts, which is just mind-blowing. I haven't checked to see it. I watched her video about the starts she did and what she had planned, but I haven't looked to see which one she's done. But it got me thinking, and January is my birthday, and I'm going to be 66. And I thought, 66 starts? No, <laughs> I'm not doing 66 starts. But I thought, well, what if I pick six? Because I've been putting some things together, and I showed you last videos that I had things kitted and I actually broke down some of those kits. So I could get the floss, get the linen, get it organized so I knew what I had. So I do have a lot of things ready to be kitted. And I thought, well, what if I pick six? Because that's something I can space it out. Can always add more. I could do six and then a second six. So that's what I'm kind of thinking about. So I wanted to show you some of the things that I was thinking about starting. I have my basket right here. Let me grab it. This is old Loggenberger basket. And then I put some things in to show you so I can kind of keep it organized here. So one of the things, and that's not going to work there because it's going to be right in front of the camera. Let me maybe do it like this. So one of the projects that I'm thinking about doing, and I'm pretty sure, and actually I'm going to start that this year. I'm going to start it either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, and I'm thinking Christmas Eve because Christmas will be busy. We're going to be going to church Christmas morning, and then we're going to uh, be cooking as soon as we get home, and our daughter's coming down, so it's going to be a busy day, and there probably won't be much stitching time, so I may start that Christmas Eve day, but this is what I'm thinking. It's from Threadworks Primitive, and put it under the camera so you can see it. It is Christmas Tide. I'm going to take it out of the package here so you can see it. I didn't plan this very well. I should have had it out of the package. So this is at Christmas Tide, and I just love the little houses. They are so cute, and this is not a big one. Some of the things, as you see, I've been doing are pretty big. Um, it is 13 inches for the design section, but it's only just under three inches. So it's a pretty good little size and cute. I think I'll pro probably frame it, put it on the mantle uh, for winter. So that's, I think I'm going to start Christmas Eve day. And I have pulled the linens. It calls for 35 count cocoa by weeks. And I had that pulled. But when I laid the threads out, I, I, I didn't like it as much as I thought. So what instead I'm doing is six, 36 count vintage buttercream. And it does, it looks like a soft butter color. And then here are the called for threads that I've got here, spread them out. So it's using a combination of weeks and classic color works and gentle arts. You can see they're really quite pretty. And the, this cream shows up very nicely. So the cocoa was just a little dark. So those are the threads, which are really pretty. I've got them on a little, one of these flexible rings. And then this is one of the floss drops, thread keeps that I made. So put a little Santa on there with a little charm. Let me come back here, see if I can hold it up. You might be able to see it better here because when I hold it up, got the quilts in the background. Let me give it a try here so you can see. 
So you can see the colors. And I just think that that's probably going to be what I'm going to start with on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve day. Um, so I don't know. Can I count that as one of my starts? Grab this. I don't want to mix anything up. And you can see I have the really high class project bag. That's what I'm doing right now as I'm putting things together. And then I'll move it to a nice project bag in my work area. So that is Christmas Tide using the hand dyed floss with uh, vintage buttercream, 36 count. And I don't remember who it's by. That is not on the slip. So that's one. I don't know if I can count it as the six. Maybe I will, but that's for Christmas. Then I thought, what if I do a New Year's start? I know they're just a week apart, but thinking about starting on New Year's Day, which is going to be a Sunday again. So I'll have um, time Sunday afternoon once we get back from church and have fixed dinner and all of that, clean up the kitchen. So I've got Sunday afternoon and I'm thinking if I do a start on New Year's Day, kind of do it as a thought of what the year is going to be about. So looking through my charts, the one that I plan to start New Year's Day as some of the six that I'm thinking about, it is by Willow Hill Sampling. It is Live Simply. There we go. So Live Simply, Simply Live, just again, a nice little motto for sometimes we do get our lives so busy and so complex. So I thought that would be a nice, not again, not real big um, 15 by 5, but it's got a lot of open area. So I don't think that will take too long to do. It's got the little beehive in there. I'm a sucker for anything with a beehive or bees since our last name is Combs. So these are some of the called for threads, which I have pulled here. Now I've been pulling some of the linens out of my stash, trying to see what I would like. And I found a 36 count old gold. So here that is. Showing up really dark here, which this is really light. And I'm still wondering if I want to do a lighter linen. I'm going to lay that out and take a look. But these are the threads, the floss. And I really like how they look against this. So I am debating. Is this just does call for hazelnut, and that's what the model is, even though it's very light. So I'm not sure. I do like how this looks, but I may change my mind. And this is the floss holder that I made. I uh, took a, just copied this on my copier at a reduced, no, I did it that size, put it on some card stock, glued it down, and then I copied this and cut these out. So I have which one, which threads are which. So it's all organized there. And it just makes a nice little red holder. Let me come back here to the main camera. So here is the linen, and here are the colors. So you can see this gold showing up a little bright on my monitor, but you can see when we put it under the close-up camera, it's more of a, yeah, that's closer to the real color there. So I don't know about that linen. I'm still debating, but that is what I'm thinking about doing 
for a New Year's start, this motto, and kind of remind myself, just take time, enjoy, take a breath, you know, enjoy the garden, sit on the front porch in the morning and drink some coffee and just take a breath. So that is the next one. I'm going to keep these together. So that's New Year, uh, Christmas Eve day, New Year's Day. So that's two. The third one, and I do love my coffee. Because I have a cup or two in the morning and sometimes one through the day. So what I'm thinking of doing on my birthday, which is toward the end of January, is, this is by Heart String Samplings. Heart. It is Coffee Quaker. <laughs> this is pretty true. First I drink the coffee, then I do things. And of course, love the sample motifs. But I think, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much what my day starts with. So this one, uh, Star Hollows Blend, 40 count. And then you've got the dye, uh, hand dyed, which I have pulled. So the linen that I think I'm going to use actually is what the call for is. So R&R Star Hollows, 40 count. Got to check and make sure that this is the right size linen for this. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'll figure that. So there's the linen. And here are the called for threads which look very nice on the linen. This one seems so bright. I'm going to have to take a look to make sure I pulled the right one. So I've got a little bling on here with the uh, coffee bean, coffee cup. And I think last plus tube, I mentioned where I get these rings, these dark rings. So it makes a nice uh, holder for it and come back to the other camera and show you. So there's the linen with the thread. And so I think that's gonna be a birthday start. I'm gonna check that, is that? That green is grasshopper and yeah, uses it. Okay, I see where it's being used. Right down here. Here, maybe there. So those two spots can always change that as I go along if I think it's going to be too bright. Let me um, share with you when I'm picking fabrics for quilts, I kind of do the same thing when I'm picking the linen and the floss is I find that if I have a little distance, instead of being right on top of things when I'm picking them, if I have a little distance, it helps me see what's happening. So what I do is I lay the fabric if I'm doing a quilt, or in this case, laying the linen on the table, spreading the floss out. Let me come to this camera again and show you. So I would lay, spread it out, and I would have the floss off of the ring, but I would spread them out so I can really see every color. And then what I do, oh, well, that looks pretty <laughs> right there. <laughs> then what I do is I actually step back a few feet from the table to look at it because when we are picking fabrics for a quilt or, or picking the linen and the, the floss for a project, we're right on top of it because we're picking things. But we normally don't look 
at that sampler or quilt that close again. So you come back here. So I'd lay it on the table, like show you. And I'll stand up and I step back a few feet and look at it. And then it helps me see what's happening. It helps me see if things are blending well. Now, for those of you that are picking fabrics for quilts, you can do the same thing. Or I'll show you another little tool. If you've taken a class with me, you've seen this. This is a little door viewer that you can get at the hardware store. This one I got at a quilt shop, but you can get them at a hardware store. It's what you look at or look through when you go to a hotel. And what you do is... You lay your fabric out on the table, or in this case, your floss and your linen, and you stand at the table and you put this up to your eye and look down, look at the fabric or look at your linen and floss. And what it does is it gives a little distance. Now, I haven't used this much when I'm picking floss because it's going to be smaller. The product is smaller and the finished product is smaller than a quilt. Quilt's pretty big. So normally I use this when I'm picking fabric for a quilt. But that's something, let me just take a look here. Gets it pretty far away. So I'm not sure if you want to try using it for picking out your linen. So what you could do is just step back, lay the floss or the silk or the cotton, whatever you're using on the table, step three or four steps back, then look at it. It'll give you a better idea. And if you're using this for quilting, uh, I would use this. So coming back to the birthday start, I think it's going to be this because I do love a cup of coffee. Of course, got to decorate everything. So got the little charms there. So that I think is going to be the birthday start. So that's that's three. Now I put this back together because I don't want to mix everything up. It takes a while as you're selecting because you're going to be working on this for a long time and then you're going to have it for a long time, either hanging on your wall or displayed somewhere. So I want it to be right. So that is the birthday start. So what I'm thinking is I have a few more. That's three. So I have a few more I'm thinking about. Let me grab them. I got them piled right here. So we're going to talk more about this one in a minute. But our anniversary is right around St. Patrick's Day. It's not on St. Patrick's Day, but it's close to it. And one of the quilt books I wrote was Celtic Peace Delusions, or Celtic Designs. So I was thinking that for an anniversary start, Thinking of doing this Celtic band sampler. Now, let me, uh, let me pull it out while I talk to you. I'm going to talk more about band samplers in a few minutes because you know, I went down a rabbit hole on that. Wow. I, I'm going to do another one, but now I'll talk, I don't want to spoil. I'll talk about that in a minute, but let me take this out of the package. This is an older sampler. It's 20 years old, and it's by Homespun Sampler. And I will put the link uh, in the description. I got it on Etsy. But look at that beautiful sampler. So I think that's going to be the March start. And it's 8 by 21, so it's not super wide, but it is long. So that one's going to take a while. So we'll talk about the threads that I've picked in a minute when we go to that, that part. I'm going to set this aside because we are going to talk about band samplers. So that's a fourth start. I'm thinking of doing, well, I'm not sure. Let me put them under the camera. This is where, so I've got four for sure. So if I'm doing six, what else am I going to do? I've got this one by Sampler uh, Shakespeare's Peddler, which I just love. So I'm thinking that one, C.A. Hare, 1834. 
So I'm thinking that is possibly one. And we'll come back to this one. Here's another one. This is something that is older. And there we go. Sampler roll by samplers. Remember, look at those beautiful little houses. This is an older one. And I called the attic and asked them if they still had it. And they said yes. And so they sent, let me check, is this the called for? I think this is the called for linen. It's Weeks Confederate Gray 40. Don't. As I said, if you have it, send it with what it's called for or what you believe would work. It's kind of a greenish gray, which I'm here looks more creamy. So that, that again, I may change, but I did ask if they had a floss or a silk conversion and they do. Well, it's a combination. Actually, I might have said, send me the hand dyed. No, this is silk. Classic color work silk. Look at those colors. And then some, what is this one? Dinky dyes. Oh, these colors are gorgeous. So they look really beautiful against the linen. Um, before I, if I decide to do this as a start, I'll probably lay it against a creamier linen and see how I like it. But these are really beautiful. So that is another option for a start sampler roll. And I saw that I was watching one of the addicts videos that they've done in the last couple of years. And that was in their video or it was in one of their older newsletters. I can't remember, but I did see it from them. And I just thought those little houses, there we go, are so charming. And it's pulled from an old sampler, that little motif. So, well, that's a possibility for a start. And... You look at this one while I'm putting these back. I just don't want to get them mixed up. So this is another one that I have all kitted. It's the drawn thread kitchen garden. And in the last few years, I've put in a garden. Absolutely love this little raised bed garden. I raised flowers, vegetables, so many things. So I'm thinking of doing that as a start. So these are all maybes. Um, this one, 32 count summer khaki, which is this color. And I did order the silk to go with it, which are right here. I need to put them on a ring. I don't think I'm going to take them out of the package, but those are the colors. And I decided to do the silk. It does have a, uh, somewhere I saw a conversion to general arts. Oh, you can go to the Drawn Thread website and they have conversions. So I could do DMC or gentle art, but it mentioned on here that they're acceptable, but they won't match exactly and it will be different. And I just love the colors of this and I love the sheen of the silk. So that is one I decided to do silk on. I only have a few that I've kitted with silk uh, and this is one of them. So the 
kitchen garden by the drawn thread is one I'm thinking about as a possibility for next year. And then as I was looking through these four by the drawn thread are another set of possibilities. Give me one second while I put things back together. So on this one, you have simply, simply spring. I'm finding as I'm looking at my charts, I'm really drawn to houses and alphabets. <laughs> as I'm like, oh, I didn't know I had so many, but I must like it. So simply spring, simply summer, there again, beehive, simply autumn, and simply winter. But what's really fun about that is you can put them together. So I'm really thinking about that. They're calling for 32 count dirty Belfast linen. So I'm gonna have to look at it a little more to see. It looks like the cuts 10, 10 by 12 for this, perhaps. It could also be for yeah, it wouldn't be for that. It must be for this. So I've got to open the pattern and take a look more, but it is charted with the gentle arts, which I have a lot of these. So anyway, I'm thinking about doing these four like this. So that's those are the things that I'm thinking about doing. And let me come back here thinking about doing that because I am going to the attic for sampler symposium so I know there'll be some new starts there and I'm sure <laughs> that I will find some things at the attic to purchase and actually I am making a list so I can be a little more focused as I go in, because I know it's going to happen, I'm going to want everything. So I'm making a list of the things I know that I'm going to be looking for, and then write down some things to also look for, just like, well, let me look at this designer so I can actually look at them. Because in the last year, since I've been kind of coming back to Counted Cross Stitch, mostly I've been ordering online because I'm at least an hour to an hour and a half to a shop of any size at all, if, other than Hobby Lobby, where I've gotten my DMC uh, floss. But to go to a shop, it's a ways. So I've mostly ordered online, which has been wonderful. But to actually go in a shop, I know it's going to be overwhelming. So I do have my list, and I have it on my phone as I think about something I put it in notes under the note to purchase at the attic. So some of those starts, some of those six starts, you know, I have three or four for sure. And I'll find a couple more. And I have a feeling it's going to be six that I'm starting with. And then six I got at the attic. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to try to control myself. So I told you I was going to talk about band samplers for a little bit or because me, where is that? I purchased this from Amazon. This is, and I'll put the link in the description. This is the complete set of the magazine, Sampler and Antique Needlework. And it comes on a disc, like this. Put it in your computer, open it up. You can look at all of those issues. So it's 80 issues. So what I did, is get here, put it on my computer, and then to get my iPad here. So then, because I'm not going to sit at my computer and read these, I'm just not. So what I did is I got my iPad and transferred a few of the magazines to my iPad. Now, you can do it wirelessly. These are really big files. So what I did is I picked the first four issues 
to transfer to my iPad and I put them under the books file. Let me pull that up here. And if my screen is filthy, I apologize. Okay. So what I have, well, I want to save this. Um, so I have them on my iPad, and I'll show you that in a minute where they're at. But I put four on there under my books. So then I can go and take a look at them. And that's where the rabbit hole started with the band sampler. So this is one of the pages. Here. So this was back in 1992. So that is one problem. As you're looking at these, if you see something you really have to have, you better take a look and make sure that it's even still up available. But this band sampler, they, they were teaching a class on it. And it was being taught by Joanne Harvey. It is the uh, Standish sampler, the oldest American sampler known, 1644. So they have done a reproduction, which there's a pattern. I think there's just a few left you can find, but here it is. Look at that. This is one nice thing. If you put it on your iPad, you can blow it up. So you can really look at it. So 1644, it uses, of course, many stitches other than cross stitch, but I think it is just beautiful. So when I saw that, now I'm gonna come over here to my computer, which this is why we're not doing it in my sewing room this time, because I want to show you. So I did a search for band samplers. And there are quite a few of them. And the band samplers are going to be early. So 16, 1700s. This is one that I saw that I thought looked beautiful. Because I haven't decided which one I'm going to do, which is how I came upon the Celtic one, which is new. But I do want to do a reproduction. So this one is from the Scarlet Letter, Mary Cox. That's what that one is. Now, I'm going to have to close this. Just give me one minute. So I pull up the next one. This one can only pull up one at a time. I can't pull up all of the ones that I was looking at. This one I'm thinking about. This is 1662. It's an English sampler. Love that too. And who is this by? Let's see. Can't remember who this one is per is by. Scarlet Letter. And on that website, you can actually click on it and take a look at each of it up close. Now these are going to use some specialty stitches, not just cross stitch. So that's another one I was looking at. Wouldn't these be gorgeous in silk? Uh, give me just a minute to bring another one over. I wish I had the money to purchase all these and then look at them, but for right now, I'm just looking at them online. This one is interesting. I found this on the Sassy Jack website. This is Dorothy Walpole. Again, Scarlet Letter. I love this Florentine stitch in here. You've got the alphabet and you've got all these florals here. So that one is quite unique and different. So I thought that might be one. 
that I look at. So I'm going to be looking when I go to the attic at band samplers, reproduction band samplers, to take a look. Um, let's see. Let me close this one and bring this one over. This is the same one, just a little bit bigger. So I'm not quite sure which one of these band samplers I'm going to do. I'm also leaning toward, bring another one over. This one, I think it's this one. This one is just, again, by the Scarlet Letter, very interesting, lots of different motifs. So that's on my list to look at. And knowing the attic, they probably have so many um, sampler samples and the actual samplers there, the re, you know. So I may change my mind, but I do like that one. And here is the Standish. Laura, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Standish Sampler. This is just gorgeous. This is an advanced sampler because there are a lot of different stitches in it. And uh, it's hard to find the pattern. So that one I may just have to look at and admire from a distance. But if you want to read a little bit more about it, it's really quite fascinating. So here's the information. Um, I will put a link to this page. Let me write a note about that. Okay, that's Textile Research Center, which you can also take a screenshot of that and Google it. But that started me on the rabbit hole of band samplers. But I'm not done because take a look at this. Go to Hands Across the Sea and search band samplers and oh my. So I will be looking at quite a few of the charts when I get to the attic, if whatever they have and take a look. But these are just different posts about some of the band samplers that Hands Across the Sea have done. This one is 1680. Now that one was done fairly recently, so the pattern's still available. And it's reversible if you would like it to be. Again, very uh, advanced. But there's an online workshop that looks like Nicholas has done with it or some videos. Um, this one is beautiful, MH. 1656. Uh, I just watched a video with Nicola. I think it was from Sassy Jacks, and they were talking about this sampler. Just beautiful. Now this one, Jane Vaughn. Ah, that one, I think, either was a sampler of the month at the attic or is going to be. For some reason, I remember seeing this recently. So I think that's it. So there are some more samplers band samplers to take a look at. So what I want to show you next, let me close this and show you, come back here again, come back to the Celtic band sampler because this one is new. Well, new is not, it's not 400 years old, but it's 20 years old. The pattern is available on Etsy and as I looked at this, I liked the look of how it looked old, and I noticed it had DMC, and they did it on 30 count. Well, I would do it on a higher count. So let me show you what I'm thinking of. I pulled this. This is, um, this is something I just got from Hobby House. This is 36 count. Tabby Cat and it's lollipop. 
And I thought, well, this is a Celtic sampler. So having the Lollybrock linen, which is gorgeous, would make a nice linen for that. Let me hold this up and show you. So it has that patina of age. Um, it's kind of a creamy gray. Well, it's got some brown. It's got little bits of yellow. It's kind of a creamy, dirty background, but not dirt. It just really is pretty. So I thought, all right, let me pull the DMC floss to see the colors. So I went to Hobby Lobby and pulled the colors. There's only six. And you can see, you know, here's the blue, the green, the pink. So I pulled them and I like these colors. I'm not real thrilled about the mauve. It looks a little dated. So oh, two more, I guess there's eight. There's the last two in the basket. I love these, these olive kind of rich, deeper tones. So, you know, that one's okay. I don't like that one. Love that, love that. Like that, like that. So I pulled some of my hand dye. And this is, if you're selecting, if you're selecting floss, this is one thing that you can do. You can always buy, you know, call um, your local shop, see if they have a conversion for some of, and they do for some, but this is what I decided to do. These are a combination of weeks and gentle arts and classic color works. So I'm pulling the threads, the floss. These are a little different, but I think I like that. Then I also pulled this to see which I liked. Now I'm gonna lay these out and I'm going to step back again, like I mentioned, to take a look. So I'll make my final decision by doing that. This, look at this gorgeous man. This is tarnished gold by Gentle Arts. Now this one is a little brighter, but I think I like that. But then I also pulled this one. So I'm not sure which, probably this one is what I'm gonna use. And Am I missing any? I like that. This is a little lighter. But I like that. That's a nice match. That's a nice match. This one is Juniper. But that was quite nice. This isn't quite as dark. So I might look for a week's. It's just a little darker, a little richer. This is a nice match. This, these two probably end up using this one, which is charcoal by weeks. I also pulled this one, which is maple syrup, which is a little brown. And this is really gray, so I like that. I like that. Probably do that. So those are what I'm thinking of. Maybe make that a little darker. But take what I'm going to do is take it in a room where there's natural light, lay the, everything out, and take a step back. And I do like the look of that linen, because if you look at this one, it does have a mottled background. So that's what I'm thinking. I also pulled, this is parchment, 40 count, Newcastle linen. So it works in lots redundant, 40 counts. But this one is a totally different color. It's more green, which might fight with this. So I pulled it, but I think I'm leaning toward this one. Just cover those other ones up. And I think this 
Okay, what I'm looking at is how the linen looks in there. Hmm. I'd have to look at see if the size, maybe if I stay away from this and I have enough over here. I'm not sure I like that on there. I like it there. So anyway, I'm going to spread it out so it's in between these two. Now, how did I come up with how did I come up with these matches? And that's what I wanted to show you is a conversion chart, which I'm sure a lot of you have used or seen, but I wanted to show you one that I go through time after time, and it's hard to find. It doesn't come up right away in the search results. So let me show you. So if you have a chart like I had here, and I want to change the linen size. I want to change the colors because this used 30 count. Now I wanted to use a higher count. Let me show you first of all. Come over here. Give me one second while I bring it over. If you type in cross stitch calculator into Google search, there'll be a lot of them that come up. This one is the one I tend to go to. It's by the yarn tree. And what you do is you take the stitch count. So you look at your chart, look at the stitch count. I'll actually show you. Right. So this chart is 129. And I'll put the link to the yarn tree in here. Let me write that down so I don't forget to show you the link. I'll put it in the description. Uh, so it's 129 by 338. And the linen, the Lollybrock linen was 36 count. Now on most linen, you're going to go over two threads. So you put that in. Now you also can decide how wide of a border you want and how much extra fabric for finishing. So I'm going to leave it just like that, because that's a, the default. And then you hit Calculate Size. And here it is. You can see, let me bring it up here. The chart and 30 count was, we'll just round it off, 8 by 21. But if you look here, it's just over 7 by 18, so a little smaller. This will give me the size linen that I need so I can make sure I have enough. It also recommends the size needle. And on 36 count, this is suggesting two threads. I know uh, 36 is like the dividing line, so I, before I decide if I'm doing two threads or one, I will stitch in the margin with each, doing two threads or one thread, uh, just to see, or strands, I should say, just to see how it looks. So that's on 36 count. Remember, I showed you the 40 count. So that's how easy it is to change the linen size, 40 count. This one is recommending one strand, 28. Same needle. Uh, it's going to be the stitching area six and a half by almost 17. So a little bit smaller. This is the size linen that I need. So this stitch calculator, immensely helpful because then you can take a chart and if you want to change it or if you want to make sure you have enough linen, you don't know how many strands to use, you're not sure what needle, this is invaluable. So I go to this constantly. So that is cross stitch calculator. There's a lot of them out there. I know one, two, three stitch has one on their web page, but this is the one I tend to go to over and over again. Now, what I also want to show you, close that stitch conversion chart. Now, if you, I did not want to show that. Let's just do this. 
You go stitch conversion chart into Google and there's all kinds of them. So you can say for embroidery and it's especially if you wanna go from DMC to a hand dyed and you can even type in that. Um, let's see. You can see there's there's a lot of them. Uh, one, two, three stitches, one that I've gone to where you can take the DMC and it will show you what weeks to use. But sometimes they won't have the color that you need. One of these colors wasn't listed, didn't have anything corresponding. So I want to go back to the one that I use and then I'll show you what it looks like. It is Thread Conversion List by Thistles. And I will put a link in the note. This is the one I go to when I want to convert from DMC to either Weeks Dye Works, The Gentle Arts, or Color Works. I think it's color works. Let's when you click on it, it is not a web page. Well, it is a web page, but what it is is I think I have to, it's going to download a PDF. And when you open it, it opens it up in a web page. That's why this one is harder to find. You could print it out too, but you can make it bigger. So you can see it uh, go one more back. So what I love about it is you can take one of the colors and it will give you the some suggestions in weeks, some suggestions in the gentle arts or sampler threads and classic color works. It gives you all three on one page. Instead of flipping back through websites, this is the one I go to. And that is how I was pulling threads because I could pull several of the suggestions and then lay them out. And if you're at a shop, you could do that as well to actually see which ones I like. So it just gave me a kind of a uh, guideline. So you can see, let me just pull these so you can see what they are. So I'll put that link in there, but that thread conversions by thistle. Ah, it's I've used it over and over again. So if you're wondering what these are, this is the general arts old, old red paint. This is Weeks Dye Works Raspberry. This one is Otter Creek by the General Arts. Love, love, love that one. This one is Weeks Juniper. And I love this one. This one is Dead Sea, no, Deep Sea by Weeks. This one is Charcoal by Weeks. Probably going to use that one. This one is Hickory Sticks by Classic Color Works. This one is Tarnished Gold by The Gentle Arts. Maple Syrup by The Gentle Arts. Um, Mustard Seed, Dental Arts, and Weeks Dye Works Olive. So that is how I decide on what size linen, what it's going to look like, how many strands I need. That's the chart where we typed in this information. And if you want to do a conversion to one of the hand dyed, go to Thread Conversion List by Thistles. And it's just got so many suggestions. Now, there's not always three suggestions from each, or there's not always a suggestion from each of these three. Sometimes there's just one. Just looking to see if there's ever nothing. I think there's always something. 
So it gives you a guideline, gives you a place to go. And it's just page after page. And like you saw, I made it bigger <laughs> so I can see it. But that's one of the tools that is just so handy. Now, let me come back while you're taking a look at that. Get my next little bit ready here. Show you. I can do it without knocking everything over. All right. Let me hold my threads up. Do not want to mix these up. So one of the things that I've been doing, and I'll show you some haul next, but one of the things that I've been doing is making some gloss cards. And I did the same thing, printed flip art out, glued it onto poster board. Uh, then cut it out. So I have some primitive gloss cards and I've been making some gloss drops. You can buy um, the bezels at Amazon. So yeah, those that I've made, these are, these are fun different sewing clip art. And this one, I pulled this one off separate because I just love how this is. <laughs> so here we have a lady sewing. Um, a little bit of an attitude, which is kind of fun. And I guess I should put that right side up so you see it. A little bit of an attitude. It's like, what do you want? Don't bother me. I'm stitching. But then I put this gloss drop with it. I don't know if you can see it. And it says, you aren't the boss of me. Oh, you are not the boss of me. So I just thought that was that was perfect. And she just looks like she's stitching away and does not want to be bothered. <laughs> so I thought that was fun. All right. So I've been working on making some of those and some uh, cards. Let me show you some haul. back here to me. Oh, he caught me with my glasses. <laughs> I had to do that to read it. So this is just not, I don't have this very well. I'm going to have to stand up to show you. I've got some, some patterns that I have purchased recently, some charts. This one and some, many of them you know, you've seen. Um, but, oh, love this. This is Berry Bowl Sampler by Heartstring. And I think on this one, come here. I think on this one, it's a collaboration between the Scarlet House and Heartstring. They each did different backgrounds. I may put it on one. I'm not sure yet, but I just I loved that. And charts are just like quilting patterns and quilting fabric. If you don't get it when you see it, it may go out of print and you can never get it. So that's why I'm purchasing the charts that I see that I know I'll want to do. This one by Shakespeare's Peddler. I just thought that was so fun. So that's Jetty Beans Halloween Sampler and that's available at Shakespeare's Peddler. Uh, this one's available many places. I think this one's a little older. Yeah, 2009. But got that from Kitten Stitcher at Shakespeare's Peddler. So that's uh, another one that I purchased. This one I showed you already that I do have kitted up. So this one uses either DMC or hand-dyed 
uh, morning coffee, 40 count. So I'll show you what I have kitted up for it. And I was thinking about using the hand guide, but after seeing the DMC, I may use DMC. So I pulled, I didn't have a 40 count I liked, which may be something I need to purchase at the attic when I go. This is a 36 count parchment. Look at the gloss on it. I'm wondering if those are too close. I've got to study that a little more and maybe look at some of my linen and see. But the colors are gorgeous in the DMC, and I'm thinking I may just stay with that and just change the linen. So anyway, that's something I have to ponder when I go to the attic. On my list is to look for a linen for this. This is Pretty similar. That's a little more brown. So I'm I'm going to look at what I have here before I purchase, but that may be something I look for at the attic. And this is something else I'm going to be looking for at the attic. This is the new uh, chart by Kathy Barrett. The linen and the silk it's not available yet. So this is what's recommended. I just love how that looks, but I do, I'm thinking I want to start it. So I may, this is on my list too, to look at the attic for the linen and probably do silk on this because it only has two colors. So those are some things I'll be looking for at the attic, but let's go back to Paul because I did purchase a few nice things. Let me come back here to me as I, so this last month or so, I had some international orders. And if any of you have ordered from XJU Designs on Etsy, her linen is gorgeous. Now, she lives in Hungary, and I've ordered for her before. And it took a couple weeks, even though it's holiday season, it only took a couple of weeks to get to me. She ships out right away. Her linen is gorgeous. So I ordered some, and I'll show you that. So it was funny because I have several things, something coming from Hungary, something coming from Japan, something coming from England, which I'll show you. And then I'm waiting on something from Germany, which I had hoped would be here in time, but it's not. I'll show you the next time. But let's look at some of the linen that I purchased. And some of it might work for... Uh, what I purchased or the uh, sample I just showed you. So this is 40 count. This is my little dove. And this is a almost a white table. It's kind of a light cream of gray, but this is a beautiful gray, which I don't have much gray. So I purchased that. This one is, I purchased a couple from her. Well, that is not hers. We got that from somewhere else. This one I love. And that might be what I use for the sampler. I'm not sure. This is 40 count marbled hazelnut. Look at that. Comes wrapped up, surged. It's so beautiful. You might use that. And... It's the other one I got this time. Dapple Brown. This is 36 count. So you can see this is a little bit more yellow. This is a little bit more brown. This one's kind of a blue gray. So I wanted to get a variety. So I had some choices. But look at that for this sampler. So those are the linens that I got from XJU or XJU. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I also got this. This is um, 
40 count fiber on a whim stone, which is a little different, almost like a sky blue, which is, this is more gray. So I got that. So it's a little bit different to have on hand. So those are the linen purchases that I purchased in the last month or so. And then the package that I got from England is from Minnie McBee's. Anytime I would see a scissor fob or a thread keep and I wanted to order, they were always sold out. So I caught it in time and I purchased one of Minnie McBee's scissor fobs. Put that on my red scissors that I showed you last time. So that is my from England oh. purchase. And then I'm going to come back to me here. I want to show you the box. Do you keep boxes? It's really hard to throw away a box when it says Ohana. So about a month ago, maybe a few weeks ago, Kohana had their special edition colors, winter release. And I wanted to show you what I purchased. Let me come here. So this, I, I also don't want to throw away the boxes because look at the, how beautifully wrapped and presented the box is. So it's a treat to open it. Now I've already taken out what was in here, but I just wanted to show you that beautiful, beautiful presentation. So that is the little box with the winter release of the mini scissor. So I purchased that. I'm going to check to make sure I can take these on the plane. But I thought that's perfect for the plane. I just don't want them taken away. So I'll have to check and make sure. they. I've had um, little scissors like this, just a real inexpensive pail that I would take when I was knitting. And they never took them away. So I hope it's the same for that. Then in this box, take it out of this box. Here is, again, beautifully presented. They had two colors, I think, of scissors. And I got the gray one, which, look at the tassel, look at the blue and gold tassel. And with this, With this set came this beautiful little box. This was a little added extra, and in it was a tree. Oh, this was. So that is my purchase from Japan this time. So I won't be purchasing many of those scissors, but I did treat myself to those. And I got a birthday coming up, so I, how often can I use that excuse? Because <laughs> I'm going to the attic soon. So I don't know if I can use that too much. Well, let me just look at my list. Let's see, I've shown you what I purchased. I'm checking around me here. Um, so probably won't do another floss tube until after I come back from the attic. If I can, I'm going to do a live uh, video at the attic to show you. I'll just do, a, if if it's not too crowded, and if I can, I'll just do a slow walkthrough so that you can see what they have. I know that they did that on one of their videos um, when everything was shut down, and it was so helpful to be able to look at it because then I could write down things that I wanted to look at more and then call and, and purchase or use their order form and purchase. So I'll do that, walk through, and then 
I'll be at Sampler Symposium. It's Friday night, Saturday, and then some on Sunday. And I'll be showing you the different projects that we worked on, um, show you some of the things I purchased. And I really try to stay, stay, not crazy, stay with my list. So I think that's it. I will put links, I'm just checking, checking my notes. I'll put links to some of the things that I talked about in the description. So you can go to it or you can always just do a, a screenshot and Google things as well. But I find the links are helpful because then you can just click on it if you're um, watching it, especially from, uh, I think, not a TV, but if you're watching it on your phone or iPad, you can just click the links right in the description or a, a computer. So I think that's it. I just want to make sure I've covered everything. Well, I want to wish you all a wonderful holiday season. I hope it's peaceful for you. I hope you're able to get with your loved ones, whoever they are. If you're not able to, I hope you're able to get together with friends or people you care about. And I want to wish you happy holidays, a very happy new year. We've got a new year coming up very soon. So I've got plans for stitching. Let me know. We didn't do a question this time. So this is my question to you. What are you planning to do in 2023? Are you going to do some new starts? Are you going to work on things you have and finish them up? What plans do you have? I have a combination, as you saw, to work on some of the projects that I have in progress and also do some new starts, but not go crazy. That's the plan. <laughs> Let's see if I'm able to do it. So un next, until next time, be well. Happy stitching.